we just spent eighty thousand dollars rehabbing this house so let's go ahead and check it out i haven't been here before i've only seen some photos and this is the one you guys have been waiting for remember this is our first ever episode the house that was full of trash and bottles of piss and all that stuff it's all wrapped up i brought wes and lauren uh, my partner and project manager and a designer that we hired for this job so they're going to get into the nitty-gritty on the design and rehab here and let's do a quick little walkthrough and we can get a high level view of what's going on so let's go check it out and by the end of the episode we'll run through the numbers and we'll tell you guys exactly how we crossed that six-figure profit number in this deal Woo! I'm on my way to an island and I'm popping shit at the pilot it on. niggas be broken be solving but still talking shit like they violent niggas is broke. they said that they honest some money these niggas gonna say that they got it huh? get knocked with the kid it's success and these niggas gonna blame it on talent they don't wanna see you win they don't Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm the interiors consultant for this project. I was tasked with designing a mid-century modern style home. This home is a ranch house and the buyers of the property really wanted to um, restore the original character of the mid-century modern ranch style home. So we'll walk through and we will point out some of those modern elements. So starting with the kitchen, we went with a slate tile. Slate was a very popular material in the mid-century. Building off of the dark gray slate, we went with a white cabinet. I originally recommended a very light seafoam blue-green. Um, I still think that would be really nice and could be an addition for the buyers and a great contrast to this light gray. There's a seamless gray quartz countertop here. Granite is really popular in homes today and it's beautiful and I love it for a lot of different reasons, but in mid-century homes, granite wasn't popular yet. Instead, we would go with kind of a flatter color, a flatter finish a lot of times, and so we just went with a nice gray here. Moving on, we decided on a some darker appliances, which I think go really nice with the gray and the white. We're continuing with the um, black and gray. It's kind of a masculine feel in here, but still light with the white on the walls and the cabinets. So we did a darker sink, um, which matches this nice dark sink fixture here. Up on the ceiling we have a, um, it's a Sputnik light fixture. It's a mid-century atomic style fixture. So when I was designing this home I really wanted it to be buyer friendly. I knew that they were going to be selling the home. So a lot of this stuff is pretty palatable for most buyers but I wanted to add in a couple of elements that were really true to the period like this light fixture. Um, moving on to the living room. Again continuing with the nice white um, bright wall. Most buyers really prefer a lighter wall, no color. If they want to, they can paint it later. I chose a three-armed fan because it was pretty popular. Again, referencing the space age, it was just a little bit more modern looking. After, actually, after World War II, mid-century modernism came into popularity. And before that, it was a lot of um, Victorian style homes, very ornate. They just kind of wanted something fresh and new, and that's where mid-century modernism came in. And that's where simple fixtures like this one with the three arms and very simple, no ornamentation happened. For the fireplace, I'm actually pretty surprised they kept this fireplace. I fought for them to keep this fireplace. I'm really big on preserving the mid-century elements of the home. And a lot of times when homes are this old, you don't have that many elements to preserve. But here, you can see this brick has a lot of variation in it and you just can't find that anymore. Just the shape of it. There's some different colors in there. I just thought it was beautiful. I'm glad they kept it. And then on the floor here, we did a nice terrazzo. Um, Tile. Terrazzo is also very popular in the mid-century. It's actually being popularized again today. A lot of people are using it. And so we just went again with a nice dark masculine feel um, and did some terrazzo, a little hearth around the fire. And then in here we did a globe light fixture. Again, because it's a brand new home, everything was fresh. We had to focus a lot on the finishes and just put like kind of pack a punch where we could. And that's where I put in this light fixture, this nice globe light fixture with the um, gold finish on it. And that was really popular also in mid-century. Okay, so in the bathroom, I really wanted to keep it, like I said, modern, um, but not too mid-century, also contemporary for the buyer. So we have really fresh palette in here too, white and black, featuring some long stacked subway tile. Subway tile is super popular right now. It's super available and affordable at you know Home Depot, Lowe's, etc but one way to mix it up is to stack the tiles instead of staggering them. So we just went with like a long, I think 14 inch tile, stacked them up and it looks really modern, really clean. Mid-century modernism was a lot about shapes and lines. And so that's why we went with the stacked tile 
Um, it's very accessible to buyers, but it is a little bit of a fresh take on it. We have some gold light or some gold fixtures in the shower here, and then that is also reflected in our light above the sink. It's a three light fixture, and again, the globe theme coming in here, um, black fixtures, and then the floor is a hexagonal tile, again, bringing in some shapes, bringing in a little bit of interest and honoring the mid-century soul of the home but still keeping it very relatable to the buyer. And that's all I got for you. Thank you for letting me take you on a tour of this design I did for this mid-century style ranch house. And you can check my website and social in the description. Hey, this is Wes Pittman with Reno Area Home Buyers. Wearing my dad's sweater today. I wanna to walk you through what we did with the uh, rehab here so you can kind of see the finished product. Uh, Lauren already stepped us through and kind of talked about some of the finishes that we spec'd here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the uh, challenges that we encountered with executing this rehab vision and just how much more goes into actually doing a design when you're working with a designer. Um, I think the product is totally worth it, but also just gonna give you some heads up when you're doing your rehabs, um, just going forward, kind of things to think of uh, and get in front of issues. Okay. As Lauren talked about with the design portion, really, really happy with how this kitchen came out. Um, I think Gray's been way overdone in, in recent years, but in the specific setting of this house, it looks badass. Um, we absolutely love the contrast, and as she was talking about a lot in her notes, it's a very masculine feel. So we got some dark colors here with the contrast with the nice white. Um, it feels strong, it feels metallic, it feels earthy. We just love the way it looks. You know, there's just always little things that come up with your design towards the end, and you're just hustling left and right. So for instance, this fixture, once we recentered the walls and everything, you know, just a few days before listening, we're like, oh crap, it's like six inches to the right, you know? And we could have left it where it was, but it was right to get it centered. And so always when you're coming down to the end of your rehab, be ready, you know, to set another week just for callbacks and fixing little things. Because for instance, that ceiling fan didn't work when we were like set it up and then we had, you know, wrong color finishes come in on stuff. So be prepared because you're gonna definitely have a few things show up um, that you need to handle at the very end. Floors in here, we did like a natural wood stain um, in terms that for the color, I think we used a, a water-based stain for it, which just kind of brings out the contrast, which is one of the things that I really like about the hardwood floors is that you see all the differences in color. True mid-century modern probably would have been a darker color, but in terms of buyer preference and what people like to see in houses right now with the bright open airy feel, the lighter color definitely works better. We went back and forth about whether or not towards the end we were gonna paint this because we were having a lot of trouble getting it clean but at the end of the day, we were able to preserve the brick, which actually in this setting, I'm really happy we did. Sometimes it's cool to paint brick, but at the same time, if you've got a badass fireplace like this and you're, you're embracing that mid-century modern theme, it's really cool to be able to preserve it and use it as a centerpiece for the house and really celebrate it. So the uh, other space that uh, probably would highlight the most challenges that we had in the rehab and things that you had to think about is actually the bathroom. So with our bathroom, we had everything you can imagine. First off, when the contractor was almost done, the general contractor I was using for tiling this, I had to come in and tell him it looked like shit and he had to rip the whole thing. Um, so we made them retile this whole surround because with this style, it's called a, 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 a stacked running bond for the, uh, the tile. You need to have all of your, your grout joints looking really clean or otherwise it's just gonna look terrible because you don't have that regular 50% offset which can be a little bit fudge. With this, it's gotta be right. And so we had a few things that were wonky in here and it just wasn't giving us that vibe that we wanted for that like really clean structured mid-century modern look. So they had to pull it um, in terms of like negotiating and working with contractors. It's really smart to like build rapport and remember there's a, a person on the other end there. So in this instance, because we were making them do so much more work to redo it, even though it was like right and it, they were supposed to do it right. And so that this was something that we expected of them. I fronted the cost for the material and then they, they, they covered the time. And that way it was a, a way of me showing that I wasn't trying to punish them for, for the work and that I was compassionate and empathetic. I wasn't gonna make them buy the material again and just make them lose you know money out the ass on this job. I wanted them to still like, you know, feel, feel pretty good and have good feelings and be able to work together in the future because I do appreciate them. I do appreciate the quality of their work in general. Um, little things that I was actually talking to Lauren, the designer about and the sort of things that you encounter with and you just gotta be ready to pivot with. So for instance, this vanity here was actually incredibly challenging for us to work with because the um, manufacturer, I think it was like a Chinese manufacturer or something, did not care at all about the install. They were just looking for the look. And so a lot of times with these style of cabinets, you'll see that they'll have like a little, little fake drawer like this so that you can actually fit your plumbing in there. 
Well, this one didn't. And so I actually had to like modify this with like a table saw at my house to make it so that we could actually put plumbing in this thing. And so like a number of days, like we were like, oh, we're ready to list. And then it was just like all day, I was just like running a table saw and then like running around finding like parts that were missing and all sorts of little stuff. You deal with that way more on jobs with designers, but at the same time you get a way better product. And so this is a job that we're really happy that we, you know, we forked out the cash and we took the time to do something really well, something really unique that kind of celebrated the cool bones of this house and the market ate it up, um, which is part us, part just that it is crazy here in Reno, April, 2021. So to go over numbers on this, we picked this bitch up for $159,000. Uh, originally, we thought we were only gonna sell it for about 270,000 as a two bed with about 40 or 45 in rehab. Market has ticked up severely. We did a badass rehab in here. We ended up listing it for $375,000 and we accepted an offer for 410,000. Uh, we did have to double our rehab budget on, on this one to get it there, so we spent right around 80,000 on this entire rehab. That being said, when we close out at that 410,000 sale price, our net profit in this deal will be $140,000, which is by far our biggest deal, and pretty crazy that we will be able to make as much in profit as it costs to buy this house, but that's the sign of the times right now. Market's crazy, so we'll take them while we can get them. And it's kind of making up for the lack of inventory that we've been able to buy lately. So super grateful for this deal. Turned out awesome. This is by far my favorite project that we've done. So make sure to smash that like button for us. Help us out with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new here, click subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our content. And we will see you on the next episode.